In his State of the Union speech, President Obama tackled head-on Republican claims that chaos in the Middle East and Persian Gulf stems from weakness in his leadership. And then he sent an ambassador to elaborate. Samantha Power, United States Ambassador to the United Nations, addressed an audience at Seton Hall University. Michael Hill reports. Without mentioning any candidate by name, U.N. Ambassador Samantha Power said their opposition to resettling refugees here is wrong and short-sighted. By turning away refugees, we would lose out on the tremendous contributions that they will make to our societies, that they have made. Power pointed to predecessors Henry Kissinger and Madeleine Albright as examples. In the Seton Hall University audience, she pointed to guests she invited, the nonprofits and Pakistani, Iranian and Syrian refugees they helped to resettle here after fleeing war and persecution. Imagine for a moment refusing to take in a family threatened for its beliefs. The ambassador also invited the mayor who wrote to the White House in September that he would welcome refugees to Hailden. I recognize and other mayors recognize that we need to separate these normal folks, everyday folks, from the combatants. Republican Assemblywoman Holly Shapisi says she has the same compassion for families and women. But when you're talking about large numbers of single young men being integrated into a Western society, when they come from maybe areas or cultures that have viewed women for generations as second, third, fourth class citizens, it's a very dangerous proposition. The administration's policy on resettling Syrian refugees in America has come under fire from governors and many others in America. But so has the administration's policy on dealing with the Syrian conflict, which has led to the refugee crisis. We learned from Iraq and Afghanistan state building is not easy, right? People elected the president with the idea that we want to disengage from foreign wars. So how can he withdraw us from two wars and then get us back into one on his way out? Power came to Seton Hall University to expound on President Obama's last State of the Union address. She countered the campaign trail assertions that America is seen as weak under Obama. Power said the Ebola crisis two years ago showed that the perception among nations is just the opposite. That's a belief that we can just snap our fingers and, and uh, remake the world ourselves. Power said the policy of engaging hostile countries, such as Iran and Cuba, is about helping each nation's people. By restoring diplomatic relations with Cuba, we have taken away the regime's bogeyman. But the administration's policies have created a cadre of campaigning and critical commentators. The ambassador says it feels it needs to address. Michael Hill, NJTV News. Camden has long been a food desert, a single full-service grocery store serving the whole town. But a new study suggests growing access to food can lead to growing an entire economy. Cultivating Camden, the city's food economy strategy, is the work of the Delaware Valley Regional Planning Commission. Allison Hastings is manager of the Office of Communications and Engagement for the Planning Commission. Thank you for being here. What is your takeaway from the report? Um, that Camden has a lot of existing resources and they have a lot of um, coming economic development that small businesses and existing residents can really benefit from. And the food economy is poised to help the city create small new small businesses, support small businesses, and grow more jobs. I'm going to take you all the way back to how did it become a food desert in the first place? That's a great question. Um, I think Camden is very much like the rest of the United States in that um, supermarkets have really sprung up in the last 35 to 40 years. And before that, people used to shop almost every day for food at the local butcher, at the local grocery store. Mm -hmm. um, but the supermarket ha is so convenient, um, has really become the dominant way that we get food now. And supermarkets need to locate uh, and serve larger populations. So as many other businesses moved out of Camden or moved out of similar cities to serve larger populations with higher income, that also happened in Camden. So really two reasons. Uh, the food, how we purchase food changed. But also and, Camden had a terrible economy. Yes. 
and and w food goes to where there's the highest income level to pay for it. So that has created these food deserts or, or places of food insecurity. So how do you use food to grow food <laughs> as well as an economy? Um, the food economy is an interesting way to look at an economy in general. Um, as the world continues to globalize and, and businesses continue to globalize and look for other marketplaces, food will co probably continue to be relatively local or regional, especially prepared food. So there's a great opportunity to grow local businesses, the local economy, through developing the food economy, because that's also where we're spending more of our disposable income, as well as our um, necessary income to get three meals a day. So there's a great opportunity to, to grow your food economy. Um, at both the small business, but then also the large business, like a Campbell Soup or a large manufacturer that's exporting a lot to the rest of the United States and bringing value into a city or into a regional economy. So we think that the food economy is an interesting way to look at how to increase um, household incomes, how to build jobs, mm -hmm. and all different types of jobs. Let me ask you a chicken or the egg mm -hmm. question. You've got huge companies coming in, Holtec, Lockheed Martin, Subaru, mm -hmm. um, and you've got existing uh, entities that aren't growing as much food as they could. Is the mm -hmm. influx of new um, corporate people who get hungry at lunchtime mm -hmm. going to help those or those uh, existing bodegas and restaurants mm -hmm. grow? We think so, especially if small businesses um, get the type of technical assistance support they might need to take advantage of um, social media or online um, platforms like Yelp, for instance. So yes, Camden already has a really large daytime population. If anything, they're going to have an even larger um, daytime population of workers. And those folks will be looking to um, spend money, especially food money, uh, food dollars, in a community during the day. And hopefully that leads to stronger businesses that then can stay open and serve local residents throughout the night. Um, and then hopefully those daytime workers also become cultural tourists or ambassadors for Camden City. And uh, one of the biggest uh, parts of tourism in any city is food, is local food. Allison Hastings, thanks for being here. Thank you.